You can also see here Bobby Fields initiating the offense. Why? Because Michael Jordan guarding the point guard took them completely out of their offense in game three. So whoever Michael's guarding will be off the ball today. In fact, Jordan asked to guard the point in game three and did it in tremendous fashion. Divac continues his good play with the game's first basket. B.J. Armstrong and Del Curry, who were so important in the Hornets' game two win at Chicago, were held to two points between them while being guarded by Michael Jordan in game three. Here's Michael's first shot. Ties it at two. Small, you almost have to capitalize on every decent opportunity to have any chance to pull an upset. Michael again. Not this time. Guys up the floor pressuring the ball. Disrupt the Bulls offense. They're a rhythm team. And Pippen's pass is intercepted by Mason. Three on two if they hurry. Here's Phillips again. But can you sustain this type of attack throughout the course of a game? Michael's turnaround. Spins out. Rebound Rice. Converted into Charlotte Baskets. Michael's pass intended for Rodman. There's another turnover. Wesley dishes to Rice. Up top, Mason. Michael's on Rice. Takes him inside and misses. Gets it back. Michael baseline drive around Mason. But the bank is closed. What's Mason going to do? He said, I'm going to try to get him off the block. I want him to do everything fading away from the basket. Make it be one and done. There's the rebound. Now you can run once again. Michael Jordan beats Mason on the baseline. And there's a Hornet defender waiting for him. Gets just a piece of him to be able to deflect it and knock the shot away. So what have they done here early? They've been able to force turnovers. They've rebounded the ball. They've run. That's the way you get to your early offense. You cannot run by taking the ball out of the basket after made field goals. And the thing that I noticed that Jordan is doing right now is he's trying to find out where he can score. He's taking Mason outside, shot the J. He's taking him inside a couple of times. Even though he's got two turnovers, he's trying to figure out and set Mason up at the end of the game so he'll find his shot where he can take it and where he can make it. As Ahmad alluded to early, that he would try to move Mason around throughout the course of this game. Well, well as a coach, you need to... <laughs> To prod your guys any way you can. Doug knows that. <laughs> Michael's turnaround that's is good. That's why I'm sitting here. <laughs> As we come back, the Bulls trailing by five have Steve Kerr on the floor for the first time. Michael fades and fires over Mason and drills it. By five have Steve Kerr on the floor for the first time. Michael fades and fires over Mason and drills it. Now, mentally, Michael will make a note of that spot on the court. And the next time he wants to get a basket, he'll remember to bring Mason right back there for a shot. Jordan hands it back to Kerr. Here's Kukoc. Michael with some room. And he's got eight. Now, although Michael is making that shot, you'll live with those jump shots. If he has to take 25 shots to get 30 points, you'll live with it. Where he really kills you is when he penetrates your defense and gets you in foul trouble. Gets that jumper, comes much more easily for you in the half court. See, those are two big shots for Fields because he's only shooting 36% in this series. Kukoc misses the three from the side, but Rodman chases it down. At the other end, offensive foul on J.R. Reed, who has just come in. So the Bulls have it back. Looking to tie. Michael. He had hit three in a row, but misses that one. After a slow start, Michael heats up a bit. The Bulls pull to within two after one, and you're watching the NBA on NBC. Michael over Mason. Got it. One consecutive games, regular season and playoffs combined. And here's the steal. Racing with Reed. And count the basket. See, although Mason is getting double teamed in a low post, he has to hold that ball longer. Michael, a little bumping and jostling. His shot is no good. And involved, but when you look at Jordan's shot chart, 
He's got two baskets inside. He's taking shots from all over. And we said at the start of the game he was going to move Mason around. And you look for him at the end. He scored eight. Michael. Rebound right. In the third quarter, I think it's because he's going to get some open shots the way Charlotte is playing defense. Let's see if they can find him for an open shot. Here it is. He was fouled. Posure if you're Charlotte. But that's when the veteran team tries to make their move is at the start of the third quarter. Michael not having a particularly good shooting night in terms of percentage. Followed by Rodman. You got Vladi and Rodman going at it. Here they go. Dennis is not really a fighter. He's an agitator, but he doesn't like to fight. You know, Dennis Rodman has never had a fight in the NBA. I've never saw Dennis Rodman throw a punch in the NBA, even in the years that I've played with him and since I've been watching him. But he likes to get you tangled up. He likes to get inside your head and play games with you. Debout's going strong after the rebound. The second effort by Dennis Rodman to score. And then afterwards, they both take exception. No punches thrown. It's a double foul. A little good take down there. It's the second look at it. But Rodman, as he lays the ball in the basket, he comes down with his left arm and hits Vladi. Vladi does not like that. They sort of grab each other. No punches thrown. Double foul. More importantly right now, Charlotte is down nine. They now have the possibility of closing this thing out, assuming they win tonight, by winning game five at home, which would mean they've gone through the first two rounds of the playoffs as Michael connects. First two rounds of the playoffs, getting on a plane for only one trip each round. Rodman almost lost it, turns, shoots, and misses. Gets his own rebound and can't hit that either. Out of bounds to Charlotte. Four on the shot clock. Watch Michael for the lob here. He'll try to bait you that he's coming out. And if Glenn Rice falls asleep, he'll go right to the basket. Here's Michael, as you called it, and he's fouled. Doug, that's not fair because you've coached him before. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the old hidden ball trick. Hey, Glenn, over there, I'm going to go to the basket. You got to know where the ball is, and when you're Michael Jordan, you got to put your body on him and make him go out to the sideline. You can't let him reverse you. Now, did you put that play in? Uh, we used to run it, but uh, he's the one that made it effective. The foul. Chicago up by 18. Mason pokes it away from Jordan. According to Michael's plan, he's got about nine seconds left to play. If he's to get his six minutes of rest. I can't emphasize it enough. When you watch Michael Jordan play, the way he competes and the way he loves to play basketball, it shows on his face, it shows in his steps, and it may just show in that shot. Misses that one, but a foul on the rebounding attempt. Kuko Divots has it blocked by Kuko. And now Divots and Rodman again tangled but Dennis just kind of pulls himself away from Divots and shakes his head wants no part of any altercation well the officials do a nice job when they Mother's Day. Robin just walked by and said tell my mother happy Mother's Day happy Mother Day Mrs. Robin <laughs> oh and by the way happy Mother's Day to you too mom and here is Kukoc A whistle blows, stopping play with 4.40 remaining. And the officials are now concerned that things are getting a little rough and a little chippy here. Mason with a little contact with Rodman, more than a little, sticks his hand right up under his chin. And this is the kind of game where it's out of hand. It's a 20-point game. You've already got some stuff that's happened earlier. You can get a fight down the stretch here just out of frustration. They called a double foul on that. I guess Rodman fouled him with his face or neck. Gee, it seemed like Mason was the only guilty party there. You see, you, you look at Dennis Rodman right now, and he's saying, hey, I'm just doing my job. He sets the screen. Mason gives him a cheap shot right there. 
Rodman reacts. And the thing I love about Dennis Rodman is that he backed away, clapped his hand to draw attention to what had happened. He didn't jump up in Anthony Mason's face like, hey, I want to fight you or anything like that. Again, Rodman is one of the true lovers of the sport. The way he competes, the way he plays, he's just beautiful to watch. And I think you can to keep playing. You got to keep practicing because you got another game. Perhaps surprisingly, Michael is still in there. The last call is a double personal plus a technical Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Bob. I'm here with Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman. Michael, the Charlotte Hornets started out with a lot of intensity. You guys were able to match it in the first half. Well, when we're on the road and the team's backed into the corner, the first thing they're going to do is come out with a lot of energy, a lot of motivation. And all we have to do is sustain that, keep our poise, and get ourselves back into the game. By the first quarter, we were right back in the game. So we took that, we took that best shot early on. What was the difference in the third quarter when you broke it wide open? I think our fishing defense, you know, our just our overall offense, we just we kept putting pressure on them, and you know, they never really respond. All right, congratulations to you, Michael. We'll see you Thanks. next week. Dennis, tremendous defense, tremendous effort on your part. What was going on with you and Anthony Mason? Well, we're just having a good time. You know, I asked him if he wanted to tango, but he didn't know the steps. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's a lot bigger than I am, but I try to use all my heart and my soul and try to go out there and try to, you know, get what I have. It seems like in these series, these teams come out and challenge you in the first couple of games, but you guys have a way of beating them down. We have a way of beating them down because I think some of the young teams get very excited in, in the beginning of the game. They say, oh, we got them, we got them, we got them. And they forget to play the, the, begin, uh, the rest of the three quarters. So I think that's where experience come in and uh, relaxation and knowing the game of basketball. After this game and winning here, do you feel like there's a strong feeling of of closure as far as the Bulls are concerned and closing out this series? Well, we have no choice. We have no choice. We have to go back to Chicago and win this, try to get a couple days off and try to face uh, Indiana. Of, of course, Indiana's going to win. All right, thank you, Dennis. Happy nice Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> and Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> back to you, Bob. Michael Jordan walked off this floor, perhaps for the last time, toward the locker room, and many in this crowd had remained just to watch his exit. The flash bulbs were popping. He is, of course, a native North Carolinian, played his college ball for the Tar Heels, and so he's much respected here. Chicago wins it. We go to Hannah Storm with Peter Vesey, John Sally, and Mike Fratello in our New York studio. See you next weekend.